Hi, gang. Whether you're a seasoned pro or are just getting started, my goal is to provide you with the tools you need to work smarter. So if you want to elevate your illustrator skills, you have come to the right place. In this video, I'll show you how to make a seamless houndstooth pattern in Adobe Illustrator. Before we get started, click on that like button and subscribe. Let's go. We're going to start with a rectangle. So grab the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle that is 36 points by 36 points. Now we're gonna need a couple of these. So we're going to alt drag a couple of copies out of the way. Hold alt or option and drag a copy and we'll do it again just to keep them in reserve for later. We'll zoom in a bit. With the pen tool, draw a line that is 45 degrees. So give one click, hold your shift key and click and it will automatically give you a 45 degree line. Remove the fill. Select it with the black arrow somewhere near the center of the line and we are gonna move it until it intersects with the upper corner. And if you have your smart guides on, when you get to the right spot, the word intersect will pop up and then you can release your mouse. Now we need to do this on the bottom corner as well. So Alt or Option and drag your line out of the way. And we're gonna do the same thing, select it near the center and move it until the word intersect pops up. Now we're gonna blend these two lines. Select both of them, grab your blend tool and click on the top of one and then on the top of the second. And it's going to add a third line right in between the two. But we need more than three lines. So go back to blend and double click on it so we can adjust the blend options. Change it from smooth color to specified steps and we need four steps. Click OK. And now we have evenly spaced lines across our square. Go up to object and expand. Turn off fill and stroke because we don't want to expand those, just the object, and click OK. Now with the black arrow, we can select all of this, the lines and the square. Go over to Pathfinder, Divide, and right click, Ungroup. And now we've got this divided into a bunch of individual pieces. We're going to select three of them and move them up. So we'll grab the first piece, hold my shift key, we're going to skip one, grab the second piece, skip one, grab the third piece. And then I'm going to click and drag those up here so that the corners touch. And when they do intersect, you will see the smart guide pop up and let you know. Now we can take one of these squares and we're going to do the same thing. We want it to intersect each square so we know it is perfectly aligned. Now it might happen that you get a tiny dot like this and it's not a really big deal. All you need to do is select it and delete it. Select all these pieces, go up to Pathfinder, Unite to make them all one shape. And now we'll change the fill to black and remove the stroke. And you've just done it. You've created a houndstooth pattern. We'll select that and drag it into our swatches. Now, this particular houndstooth pattern doesn't have a white background. It's just the black. We can use this by filling with it and adding another color behind it. So let's go ahead and fill with our new pattern swatch. And if we want to change the colors, what we can do is go up to the appearance panel, add an additional fill, make sure you select the fill that's on the bottom, and we're gonna pick a different color for this fill. So maybe something kind of camel colored. And now we've got our hound's tooth pattern that we can change and put any color we like behind. I'm gonna delete this. And now let's make one that's actually black and white. I'm gonna just set this aside. We need one of these that is twice as large. So I'm gonna double click on my scale tool and I'm gonna type in 200 and click copy. So now I've got a large white square that I can drag so that it's perfectly in alignment with my black. It's already in the back because of the order that we created it in. And now we're going to select it 
and drag into the pattern swatches. And now we've got a pattern swatch that actually has a white fill behind the black. So you'll see if I draw a nice big rectangle, this was the first pattern I created and here is the second. Now notice a problem. We see a grid pattern that's not very attractive. And the reason that happened was because there is a stroke on my white fill. It's really important when you create a seamless pattern that there's no stroke. So I'm gonna go back, remove the stroke, and we'll drag this into the pattern swatches again. And this time, we're going to see a perfect cons tooth repeat. I've got one more to show you. And this is one that is a little bit more sophisticated for situations where you're filling garments that are maybe wool or a little bit knobby fabric, not so flat. So we're gonna take the one we created, the swatch we created, and group it together. And now we are going to alt drag and also hold the shift key until it snaps into place right next to the first one. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna drag it down until it snaps right into place. So now we've got four instances of this. Select them and group them together. So right click group. Now I'm gonna add an effect to this. Going up to effect texture and the one we want is stained glass. Now I've played with this and discovered that these settings work the best for this particular size. And that is a cell size of nine, a border thickness of one, and we don't want any light intensity. The light intensity lightens up the image like this and it's not good for seamless repeats because it becomes very recognizable as a pattern. Going to click OK. And now we can turn this into our seamless repeat. What I need to do now is go back to this one square we have left. We need to scale it up to 200%. So we'll double click on the scale tool, type in 200 and click OK. We're gonna make sure it has no fill and no stroke. And now I'm gonna drag it and I want it to sit behind my image. And I'm just gonna kind of put it around this, this big black one right here. And just make sure, right click, arrange, send to back, that it is behind. And now I can grab this entire piece and drag it into my swatches. Now I should have a nice looking textured, whoops, I'm in fill, I'm in stroke and not fill. Let's uh, undo that and select the fill add our new pattern swatch, and now we have this great textured looking hound's tooth. Now let's use it in a flat and see how it works out. I just happen to have a little skirt over here. I'm gonna select the pieces I want filled and click on my hound's tooth pattern, which of course is much too large for this. To scale it down, I'm gonna double click on the scale tool. I know it needs to be much smaller, so let's try 10% and we're gonna turn off transform objects because we only want the pattern to be scaled. Now, this is an interesting quirk of Illustrator, but it's not gonna hold this. If I click OK, it's gonna hold the setting, but it's not going to affect what I just tried to fill. It's a little bit annoying, but it seems to do it pretty consistently. So again, I'm gonna select the two pieces I need, go back to the scale tool, and you can see this time it applied it but I only seem to have selected one piece. So let's grab the other one, and I can just use the eyedropper to copy from the first. To make this look a little bit better, I'm also going to go back to the first, the little piece on the right, select it, click on R for rotate, and I'm gonna hold down the tilde key, which is in the upper left-hand corner of your keyboard right next to the number one key. And I'm just gonna click and drag a little bit to rotate this so it's not on exactly the same angle as the front piece. And now I have this great wool houndstooth skirt. If you learned something new, let me know in the comments. And if there's anything in particular you'd like me to do in the future, let me know. See you next time.